Hi, I'm Robin Sampson with BibleJournalLove.com and HeartOfWisdom.com. And today we're going to talk about Bible journaling in a planner. You don't have to have a planner to get started. I'm going to tell you a lot of different options that we can do. You can do your Bible journaling in your Bible or in a notebook or even on index cards. So today is exciting because this is a good overview. This is not your lesson yet. The lessons are going to be a lot shorter. This overview might be um, up to an hour long. We'll find out soon. But we're going to go over all kinds of stuff about Bible journaling in a planner and learning styles and methods and, uh, you know, just different things that you want to know about learning and what's best and trying to find out something that fits your style. And then we're going to go over the PDFs that you downloaded, the free kit, and see, um, I'm going to show you several different tips to save you some money, to teach you how to print, to teach you how to cut and edit the PDFs. And I have some really neat things to show you to uh, how to make a lot of washi for almost pennies. So I think you're going to enjoy the whole thing. Uh, I've been talking to you on Facebook, and it's been wonderful to hear your enthusiasm. And you've kept me going in making the lessons. We're going to spend 22 days together. It only takes 21 days to create a habit. So hang in there till the end because our goal is to fellowship with God every day. And what better habit to develop? So I'll see you in the Facebook group. I'll read your comments below. And let's get started. So this video is going to be an overview and answer a lot of your questions about Bible journaling in a planner. And we're going to go over some of the things on your uh, printables too. I wanted you to know a little bit about me. Some of you don't know that I'm an author and I've been uh, writing uh, for 20 years. I started writing um, about homeschooling. I have nine children and I homeschooled all of them. I still am homeschooling two of them, and the rest of them are gone off and married and gave me some beautiful grandbabies. But the reason I wanted you to know about this is because there's a lot of stuff about Bible journaling that uh, fits all the learning modalities that helps you retain the information much longer. So that's very exciting. And then uh, also to tell you, I have the Bible Journal Love Itsy Shop. I'm an author and uh, later on became a designer in 2011. I didn't know it back then, but God was preparing me for Bible journaling because as soon as I found Bible journaling, that's all she wrote. Uh, the digital scrapbook shop went away and the Bible Journal Love Shop was born and I am thrilled. I mentioned that there are a lot of ways to Bible journal. Um, just like there are a lot of restaurants, there are different and different menus and different ways to cook and prepare food. There's a lot of different ways and methods and mediums in Bible journaling. And some people prefer paint and then you have acrylic and watercolors and some people want col colored pencils. And then there's all kinds of colored pencils and markers and glitter markers and it just goes on and paints and paints that come in pens and uh, watercolored pencils that you put a little water with and it's it's you know art is just so expressive and so relaxing and and combining it with study it it just is amazing what it does so this is a wonderful neat thing that's way more than a crafty hobby because you're learning about the Bible God's Word says it will never return void and you're learning about it in a way where you're going to retain the the information. And it, depending on how you do it, you can get deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'll another, use another food analogy. Um, some days you won't have time to Bible journal because that's the way life is, but you can still copy a verse instead uh, when you get up in the morning and read your Bible passage, pick out your favorite verse and just copy it. That's another form because you're still, if you write something, you'll uh, retain it 11 times more than if you just read it. So then another, and that's like a fast food. And then another day you can do like a Thanksgiving dinner and pull out all the paints and, and things like that. I happen to like digital the best. Um, I'm the minority right now. There's not a lot of people doing digital because it's kind of new, and I hope to change that. But for this course, we're going to do Bible journaling in a planner, and I'm going to tell you why I chose that 
and I think you're going to be real, real pleased with it. So if you've been on Pinterest, you've seen planners. You've seen beautiful decorative planners with all kinds of customization op options and stickers and charms. And uh, in this digital age, it's very unusual that women are um, cutting and pasting instead of just getting on an app and doing their to-do list there. But I think there's more than just uh, organizing their to-do list. I mean, of course, they're making it pretty, but they're also um, getting their community fixed, their interaction and relationship fixed. You know, God made us to have relationships. He wanted us to have a relationship with Him and with others. So those are the two commands. In Psalms 119, we'll be discussing the importance of God's law. Well, it all boils down to two commands. Love God, love others. And that's what um, why I think the Planner Rage is so popular. Shannon Noel, I think it was like November 2014, had ordered a Bible in the mail, and Amazon delivered it while she had her scrapbook uh, stuff on her table. And she opened the Bible. It was, it was a wide margin Bible, but this was way before any coloring Bibles were available or any illustrated or anything like that. It was just a note taker's Bible. Well, when she opened it and she had her scrapbooking thing sitting right there, the light bulb went off and she started decorating a Bible page. And it resonated with her and it was fun for her because it's she was combining her two loves, and she got real excited. So she posted the picture on Facebook and then went to bed. Well, some, I'm not sure when it was. You'll have to listen to her story. I'm paraphrasing the whole thing, and I hope I get it right. Sometime during the night, she wakes up and panics because she's realizing people are going to be mad that I'm writing in my Bible. So she goes online to take it down before anybody can criticize it, and it went viral. There's no way she could take it back. It was everywhere. And that's the story. The, uh, went in three years from Shanna's kitchen table to uh, millions of people are writing in their Bibles and buying stickers and crafts and companies are popping up, stamping companies. And Illustrated Faith is the company that she works with. It provides beautiful stickers and uh, you can get boxes of planner kits every month, and they have stamps, and it's just exciting. It's so exciting because I've been teaching Bible, and I used to travel all over with the homeschool uh, curriculum fair, and in 30 years, I've just never seen this kind of interest in the Bible, so it's very exciting. Well, one day, I'm sitting at the table with my planners and my Bible, and I realized that all those margin strips I made fit in my planners. So that was exciting. They fit exactly perfectly. So then I went and every single planner kit I made, I made a freebie and the freebie had one or two margin strips and some other stickers. So here thousands of planner ladies came to get free stickers and didn't know that they were getting Bible verses. So now I'm so excited to go and see other people sharing Bible verses in their planner. So let's switch gears and look at how effective this type of learning is. It's more than crafty hobby. It Because you're dealing with so many learning modalities, you have higher retention, you have better memory, uh, you have something available to you to use for review, and it's just, it's just exciting that God made us this way. He made us to all of our learning modalities. If we do something, we take a large chunk of information and we break it down into smaller chunks and then we uh, try the letters in different, and then we break up the, the one sentence and make one word bigger than another and then one capital letter bigger than the rest of them. And, all these things while we're thinking and pondering about what that means. And you, the longer you think about it, the more aha moments that you have, and you go to a deeper level. When my children were smaller, we made a lot of lap books. A uh, lap book, and it's fascinating, if you have small children, you should immediately go to Pinterest and look up lap booking, and you'll see some really neat things. You take a file folder and Trifold it. You open it up and then fold it three ways and then open that up like a window 
and the children build, create booklets. So most of the lap books that are out there already have uh, pre-planned booklets that the children just have to add a little bit to, but they still have to do all kinds of thinking and processing and deciding where their little booklets are going to go. And what happens is the children love it. They love doing it. It's crafty. It's fun. You know, first and second grade, they do a lot of crafty, fun stuff, and children really enjoy school. And third and fourth grade, it all goes downhill because then you're doing the dry, boring textbooks and workbooks. And why do that? If you can do something fun while you're learning, why not? Well, that's what Bible journaling is. So here you have 22 boxes in a planner, and you need to take you can take information one for something from a commentary something from a bible verse then you look up the cross reference to that verse and put another verse and then you take all the information that you've researched while you're using your bible study tools and you take what makes the most sense to you and then put it down on this paper and when you do that there's all kinds of ideas and thoughts turned into visible structured chunks where you're storing and recalling the information and then you're able to present it to someone else and when you present it to someone else you know it much on a whole nother cognitive level and you promote a love of learning you're spending time with the bible and enjoying it not that you did wouldn't enjoy it by just reading it i mean who you know i i love the bible i could just read it all day but there are times when it doesn't seem like the most interesting thing to do. So this way you're making it more interesting and more fun instead of memorizing a bunch of rote facts. So there's a lot of different reasons um, that this works. The visual knowledge, it's interactive, it's hand-on. Uh, every single one of these boxes, I could quote you dozens of studies done, like um, color creating interests, a different percentage of how much more you learn if you see something in color rather than black and white. That images enhance learning, you know it better. That you're using the right and left side of your brain that, uh, and you're chunking information. The brain holds a limited amount of information at one time. Some people's hold less than others. And each piece of information is best studied through a structured process that assimilates that chunk of information. So when we create these planner boxes and organize these visual elements into groups and reorganize and rearrange until we get it the way we want it, our short-term memory is only able to keep about like seven things, items of information at one time. And this chunking helps us use that storage space more effectively. Think of like uh, loading the back of a U-Haul and doing it more effectively. And you're doing that in your brain by chunking this information. We improve our comprehension and ability to access information. Format system that I've used to, for 20 years to write lessons. It's adapted from Bernice McCarthy's format system based on teaching to all four learning styles. And what's interesting is, first I found out that this is how Paul taught, and then I continued to research, and it's actually how Jesus taught, too. So let's go over these four steps real quick. Step one causes meaning. Jesus talked to shepherds about sheep. He talked to the women, daily bread. He talked to the farmer, planting, sowing, and reaping. So he made connections. The second step is Jesus always taught the scriptures. In fact, 33% of the New Testament is the Old Testament being quoted. Jesus said it is written, you have heard, and he would quote the Old Testament scripture. Then he would ask them to do something with what they learned, actively respond, to practice, to connect, go and do likewise. And then the fourth step, and I love this one because I'm a type four, he asked them to go and tell others the truth they had learned. And you can see when you do these four steps, the schools only do step two. Rarely do they do step three, and when they do do step three, they usually do something like a worksheet, something boring. So in Bible journaling, we can look at these four steps by number one, praying. So, so many people come to the Facebook group and say, 
oh, I really want a Bible journal, but where do I start? Well, where do you start? It's a little overwhelming. This is a lot to learn. Well, I think you should start by praying. Ask God what he wants you to learn. Ask him for wisdom, and God promises when you ask for wisdom, you'll get it. If I were you, and I was brand new, I would go to Pinterest. I would pray about it, and then go to Pinterest, and look at all the pages, and read the verses that are on the, the margins, or wherever they are, until I found a verse that touched me. And maybe the picture doesn't relate to you, or maybe the picture relates to you in the verse you didn't get. But find something that relates to you. That's where you're going to start. That's your first step. Your second step. So what if it was James 1.5 about praying for wisdom? That really got to you. So the second step, read and write. You're going to read the passage. This is a suggestion that I give, and you can do it however you want. This happens to be something that most Bible people who write about Bible study suggest, that you read it three times. Read it once silently, read it once aloud, read it in another version, and then I've provided a key worksheet so you can read it in a key worksheet. So if I found that step one, that I was going to read James 1.5 was going to be my verse, I would read all of James uh, 1 to put it in context, and I would read it silently in another version and then aloud, and then I would fill out this key worksheet, and the key worksheet asked who's the key subject and you don't have to fill them all out this is just getting your thoughts organized who are the key people what are the key words what is the key principle what is the application what can you do in your life today from what you're learning from that and the conclusion and sometimes you just have a few words in each box that's okay you're this is what you call studying the third step you're going to journal this is where you're going to do the fun crafty stuff now, you've already read this, and you've got it in your mind, and I want you to stay with continually pondering. Try not to get involved in a lot of other things, because this is a really special time that you can grow in learning what you're learning, and you're going to, the light bulb will go off if you continue to ponder it and chew on it. The word meditate means to chew on. So the journal is to take the key verse that you learned and to to. You know, it's going to depend on whether you want to type it or write it, whatever you're going to do. And then you're going to do it whether you're going to do it in a Bible page or in a Bible margin or a notebook page. And then the fourth step, which is so cool, you're going to share it. Share it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest. And here's where I want to ask you to do something. I'm hoping that this is one thing that you will learn in this class. That when you share, that you will share more than an image. That you will share a minimum of one sentence of what that verse meant to you or what that passage meant to you or what that reading meant to you or what you felt like you were hearing from God or what you might want to do differently in your life because of that. Because I think that's what's missing. And I think if everybody would do that, it would just be so special. When I see someone do that, they, sometimes they write a a couple of paragraphs, I get excited because I know that person really knows what they're doing. They didn't just, you know, hurry through. Now, sometimes you're going to hurry through. These four steps can be done in less than 10 minutes. So there are days that we have less than 10 minutes. So maybe just sit down and only had the time to copy a verse. Do you know if you copy one verse that you'll retain it 11 times more just by copying it, just that one action? So Praying, reading the verse, writing it, and then sharing it with someone else with, when you share it with someone else, you're adding your commentary to it, what you felt about it. So here's a couple examples of some pages that I've done. Um, we're taking large chunks of information, breaking them down into small chunks. You're going to learn a lot about that in your very first le lesson, learning the funnel approach. And this one was about the law of God. Now, let me tell you another reason um, planners work. When you Bible journal in a Bible, and you're doing Romans 11, that's all you add to that one page is Romans 11. So if you wanted to do a theme like peace or fear, this is the way to do it, to do it something like this so you can add several verses from several different books into one place. 
And it doesn't have to be a planner. It could be a Project Life album, which is a, um, you remember the baseball card plastic things where you can slip down your little uh, bas baseball cards into, into the, they have th something like that called Project Life that's in Walmart and everywhere you go where you have bigger cards and you can slip them into the little packets so you can learn that way. You could draw boxes on a notebook paper. We're going to learn more about that as we go. And here you can see what's interesting here is say, say there's, there's 22 boxes in a margin. Well, say I just learned about Romans 11 and I had 12 great pieces of information and I was kind of running out at that time. Well, that's why you have stickers and then it makes it beautiful. And people like to look at something that's beautiful, and then you can share it. And you never know what you shared, how it touched someone else that day. This is one I did on the Light of the World. These little headings are in your packet. You can print them out and use them. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, here I put what's in the Old Testament about Jesus being the light, the cross references, the New Testament verses, notes, cultural concepts. Um, You'll find during this study that I am really big on understanding what it was like during the time of Christ or what it was like during the time of Abraham and Moses. When we live in America, we don't relate to the outside world. We don't know much about sheep unless you're on a farm or something or planning and reaping and all those things because we live in a different time period. But there's also a cultural thing that Jesus was a Hebrew. All his disciples were Hebrews, were Jews. And we read a Hebrew book, but we live in America and our culture is more Greek. So if we're looking at a Hebrew story through Greek eyes, we're not getting the whole story. But if we understand the culture, and I'll show you how to use some Bible study tools to look, look up some things like that, it means something completely different than you thought it meant because it might have been a Hebrew idiom. So when you study the Bible in an American Greek view, it's like looking at the Bible with a little pen light that you hold in your purse. But if you put, um, if you start looking at the Hebrew culture and putting this, the passage into the time frame it should have been with the type of people that was that were happening then, it's like putting a big giant floodlight on it and then you're able to get in there and find the gold and really learn what's going on. So here's some of the stuff I talked to you about before that we're going to put in the planner, cross references, commentaries, commentary summaries, author quotes, illustrations, stickers, funneled passages. A funnel is just I'm going to teach you how to make take a passage like Psalms 119 1 through 8 and break it down, and then break it down, and break it down further and further and further until it fits in a tiny box in your planner. List, I use lots of lists, and I've written lots of lists already, like the attributes of God in Psalms 119, um, or the, the words God, uh, that the writer uses for law, which are eight different ones. That's a list. I'm not going to put those on an eight and a half by 11 and print them out and let you cut them because I want you to learn how to do it. You know, give a man a fish, give a man a fishing pole thing. So you can copy some of them. I don't have any problem with that, but I want you to write it. I want your hands on it. I want you to think about it. This is a worksheet and I'll go over this a whole lot more. This is the one that was in your um, kit. And let me explain to you about uh, editable. The Bible Journal Planner Kit, the black and white one, is editable, and I hope you haven't printed it out yet. If you have, it's okay, but we're, I'm going to show you how to go in there and type in it. Basically, you open it in Adobe, and you put your cursor there, and you can type in any place that is blue. It's only blue on your screen. When you print it out, the blue disappears. So you can type from any font that it accepts. Uh, some people lock it so that you can't change the font, but mine's not locked. You can write any font you want um, that, that Adobe accepts. There's some that they, they reject and a little thing will come up. You can change the bold, you can change the color, um, and you can you know, make it center, make it left justified, right justified. So you can do several things to um, and change the size 
to write in your little boxes. And if you have handwriting like mine, you might want to type instead of uh, handwrite. So here's your planner kit. Um, the planner kits that are sold do not come with papers. And um, I included a pack of 16 papers because I'm going to teach you something that's going to save you a lot of money on washi tape. The printer warning is to make sure your now this these instructions are on the page when it comes out of the printer. You should read it because it's written for a reason, but a lot of people don't. And even though I've been doing this for a couple years now, I forgot to make sure I was set to actual size. So, so my papers were printed the wrong size. But if you do make this mistake, do not throw it away. If you make a mistake and you've printed out something on sticker paper, don't throw it away. You can use little heart punches and circle punches to make new stickers from your mistakes. Warning. The cutting instructions that are on your page are useless if you cut them off. So while you still have the cutting instructions on, take your Happy Planner page out of the notebook, place it onto the printable PDF, and mark the holes. Then trim off the edges. Because if you do it the other way around, you're going to do it upside down or backwards and it's not going to work. So make sure that you put the hole markings on the page before you cut off the trim. Now, about the decorative papers. Most decorative paper packs come in about 12 in a pack and cost about $3. If you take one sheet of decorative paper, go pick the best one that you like out of this group, and print it on sticker paper, it costs you about 15 cents for your color and about 15 cents, depending on your printer. We're going to talk about that a lot later. And about 15 cents for your sticker paper. Should be less, should be more like 10, but say you, you bought 15. You've got 30 cents in that piece of paper so far. Not counting the, you know, probably 25 cents because you bought it in a pack. So altogether you got 55 cents in that one piece of paper. Well, that one piece of paper will make four and a half yards, or 4.4 yards of washi tape. And it's sometimes much easier to use than washi tape on a roll. Sometimes I prefer washi tape on a roll, but the way I do my washi, I use a ton of it because I make a digital page on my computer and then I tape it into my Bible. And washi tape going into the uh, inside of my Bible, it, it's a little rough and it's a lot easier to get a paper backed sticker paper in there than it is washi tape. So on a roll of washi tape, you only get about 10 yards. So you're getting almost half in one sheet of paper. So now you have 16 sheets of paper. It will give you 57 yards, almost six rolls of washi tape which is about $18. To cut out the washi tape, um, I have a real cheapo uh, cutter that I've had forever. Sometimes I replace the blade. But you just pop uh, three or four papers on there, make sure they're straight, and then start cutting. I cut, cut off all the white trim, and then I, get, uh, I cut off mostly one half inch, because that's the size of most washi. But I also cut a lot of one quarter inch because I like that size. And have you ever tried to cut washi long ways? It's, it's almost impossible. And then I store all those in a box and then I use that box and I put, what's really neat because I do digital washi in my digital page that I made online and then I bring it out and put another digital or a printable washi on top. I cannot tell the difference when they're side by side on the page. I have to put my hand on it to see which one was which. But anyway, you'll save a lot of money. I'll, also in this planner kit, there are, there are decorations, embellishments. I have word art and margin strips. What you can do with these, and this is not a regular margin strip, it's just the words. So I'm going to teach you how to make the background and then just put the words in the middle. 
We'll, and when I show you how to do that in paper, I'm going to show you real briefly how to do it digitally, too. This is not going to be any kind of class on digital. Um, there's a class available at BibleJournalLove.com that you can take that teaches you all the basics that you need to know by the lady who taught me everything I know. Her name's Linda Sadcast. She teaches Photoshop Elements and Photoshop. It's a wonderful class. You can get it at BibleJournalLove.com. I included several quick pages in your kit, and I'll provide you with some more free printables as we go through the study. These quick pages are great if you only want to add a few pattern boxes. The reason I made these is when you're cutting boxes, they fit right onto the line and the white will show through. And when you have something like this watercolor background, it's, uh, it blends in much better and neater. So uh, here is a sticker sheet next to it from another kit from my shop just to show you that the quick pages are interchangeable with other kits. So say you wanted to add a pretty pattern paper to every other box, then you can add uh, line boxes to the other ones. These are um, the ones that are in your uh, black and white kit are editable. And that means that you can open the line box and type in your text and then print it out and then glue it onto the quick page. Now this is a more involved quick page. Um, this one is like already ready. All you have to do is add your notes and washi tape. The, this page does actually not have the top two rows or the top sides. Those are, you know, just so you can see what it would look like once you put your washi on it. So here you would put the information that you typed out on the computer or you can just write your information right in the little squares. Make a mistake, just print out another one and do it again. And here's, it, here's what it looks like without the washi tape. Here's another example with, there's just so many things you can still make it very unique with different types of washi tape and different kinds of embellishments. So that pretty much concludes this workshop. Um, just remember that more time with God is more fruit. And I put more time with God instead of more time with Bible because we don't worship a book. The goal of this whole thing that I'm doing and that Bible journaling should be about is spending time with our Father, not spending time with the book. The book brings the message, and it's the map to get us to the destination, which is time with Him and a relationship with Him. And who doesn't want more fruit? Who doesn't want more love, joy, peace, kindness? I want more kindness, gentleness, self-control. I need more self-control. So this is it, um, and we're going to do Lesson 1 real soon. I can't wait to see you. Ask any questions in the comment box below or on Facebook, and I will answer. So good to see you. Bye-bye. printable PDF